Ricky, I've seen you out there swinging that stick, even when you're suffering pain. But you can't play baseball. You're going to get ridiculed, and you're going to wind up with an injury that you'll never get over. God's going to give you a higher calling. But all I want to do is play. When I swing that bat, I ain't crippled no more. Ricky, your story is beyond amazing. So maybe just start off and set it up for us. Talk a little bit about how you were born and you needed these leg braces, but that did not stop you from pursuing your dreams. Yeah, you know, zero to four years old, it was really a big obstacle in my life. I can't tell you how many surgeries. I don't know, but there were several um, because I didn't remember any of them, really, to be honest with you. and. Uh, and then when it became obvious that when I was five, I started going into braces and then trying to get the legs where they would be, move out rather than touching one another. And um, back then, you didn't have anything. No one could fix it. Just a deal that you couldn't fix. And plus, they were small. They were small, frail. And then um, as I got a little older, it, it, was, it didn't stop me. I hit rocks all day long anyway. Uh, so I just hit a lot of rocks all day long. I mean, I would actually hit rocks sometimes 16 hours a day. Wow. And so um, it actually, believe it or not, it, 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 it dealt me a great hand of having a, an excellent baseball swing. Mm. Because when it come time to get them off, I was just tagging them because you're hitting a little rock, you know, and if you're hitting a stick with a rock, that's very hard to do. But right. that helped my vision, helped me making contact with the ball, uh, even helped me with the stance, even though you you're you're kind of depleted with your with your uh, legs, but still learned all over right there. Just it came, just became a natural deal with me. Jeff, I know your journey began with your brother, actually, right? Years and years yeah. ago. So maybe talk to me a little bit about how you even learned of Ricky's story. Well, I will. And I, I wanted to tell you a little bit about Ricky, too. Um, his will and determination and tenacity is unbelievable. Like, I've never met anybody like him, but he does not stop. He and I have been together on this movie for like 17, well, probably 20 years now, almost. Oh. Um yeah, and and just trying to get it made. I my brother was in a in a lobby of a hotel, and Ricky was sitting next to him, and he overheard Ricky on the phone talking about trying to find a director for his movie. And when he hung up, my brother leaned over and said, "Listen, I heard I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but I I think I have someone you might be interested in. My brother is perfect for the film that you just described. He's got a big heart, and he loves this kind of movie, and you should meet him." And so Mark called me at like eight o'clock at night. And he said, I'm sending you a script. Can you read it tonight and meet Ricky in the morning? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, let, send it to me. So I read the script and it just, um, it was a spiritual connection immediately. I, I, I got very emotional reading it. I loved Ricky's character and what he went through. I fell in love with the movie and I fell in love with, with this, just the whole story. And I just had to get it made. It was like a, it was something that just overcame me. I can't explain it. It got inside me and it wouldn't leave. And every all my friends were like, Jeff, it's been years, you know, move on, move on. I said, I'm never giving up on this story. Great. You know, Forrest Gump took 12 years to get made or 15, you know, so I got to just keep going. And so um, consequently, it's funny. There's a lot of similarities to Forrest Gump in this movie and not just the leg braces, but Ricky, Ricky and, and Forrest both had this uh, innocence about them this sweet kind of nature where they would just keep going and no matter what anybody said or did they just believed in themselves and wouldn't listen to anything but their heart and that that's what it, you know turned me on to this movie because uh, I'm kind of that way myself you know I just kind of don't I don't take no for an answer my glass is always half full so that's how it all started and then you know to abbreviate the the how it got made was um, it went through many incantations of different uh, different different financiers. And um, I met a guy in a completely weird circumstance. I was coaching him as an actor. He was an investor on a movie. He never acted before. He asked me if I had anything. I pitched him the hill. 
And he called me and said, I'll get the money in three weeks. And I laughed and said, I've heard that before. And three weeks later, they called me and said, I have an investor on the phone who wants to put a million dollars in. I talked to him and he said, pitch me the movie. And something happened again. A spiritual thing happened. I started telling this story that I've told 100,000 times. And it just took me from inside and got, it just became very emotional. And Ron became very emotional, Ron Cundy. And he, he said, can I call you back in 20 minutes? And I didn't know what that meant. And I said, sure. I thought maybe he's going to be in for the million dollars. And he called me back 20 minutes later and said, I want to fund the whole movie. I want to own it. This is an unbelievable story. Everybody, every family member will be able to go see this movie and love it and not feel like there's anything negative at all other than inspiration and goodness. And that's, you know, what we all need in the world today. So that's how it all started. I couldn't agree more. And and Ricky, I'd love for you to talk about this. One of the things that I think, um, while it's your life story and it does, it is wrapped in baseball. One of the things that I think is so universal is this idea of, and especially now if people feel like everything's stacked against them or an obstacle is too big that they can't, you know, conquer it. Like how can you, what, what advice can you give or how did it work for you so that you were able to get through, you know, some of those tougher times and stay focused on a dream or have that kind of unshakable hope? Well, you heard a while ago when he said his glass was half full. Mine was always full because I don't believe in the, I don't believe in the, I, like I said before to other people already, I don't like losing mm -hmm. and I don't care what it is or what it takes. Uh, if I have to die for, die for a fly ball and go through the wall of a baseball game, which I did and did go through the wall. Yes. I broke 38 different bones. Yes, I did. And, uh, but I just don't, I don't believe in anything halfway. I just, uh, you know, just, uh, when I, when I was speaking to these people earlier about quitting, I didn't, there's no such word as quit. Never even heard of it. I just go full steam and, uh, it's what God's given me. My father gave it to me same way when I was going to be a Baptist preacher. I thought, um, I was going to be the best Baptist preacher. I was going to be the next Billy Graham. And uh, so anyway, saying that, I just, getting through all the obstacles was the tough part. And then to find out when you're 16 or 17 years old that you have no disc in your spine, really a big disappointment because it changed everything to me being in pain almost every day playing. And even though I got to sign a major league contract, it's an absolute miracle that that happened. And even the night of the ending of the movie was an absolute miracle. It oh, it's a miracle. I mean, the end of the movie is unexpected. I mean, as you know, Kelly, people uh, people can't even believe what he did. I mean, he, he didn't just go out there and try out for a baseball team. He went out and did... A magical thing it's it's I got, that was my word throughout the whole movie magic this movie's magical it's almost fantasy i mean dennis read the script and said did this kid actually do this <laughs> did he is this a really true story i said yeah i validated it all it's all documented and he really did it i have so much memorabilia of ricky that i've collected over the years just pennants and pins and all kinds of different um articles on ricky's success and what he did that um, I said to Dennis, I have it all documented in a book if you want to see it. And he's like, no, I believe you. I just... <laughs> and then he, Dennis spent two hours with Ricky and he came came to work the next day and Dennis said, holy smokes, Ricky's quite a character, man. He's got so much um, passion for what he does in life. I said, that's what drove him to do what he did in the movie. Yes. I said, and he, and, and he, know, he knows the Bible like back to front. Um, I called his sister one day because I said, you know what? I got to ask you about this preaching part of Ricky. Like, is this real? Like at eight years old? And she said, Jeff, he used to pull the little stool up and sit right in the front door. And he would preach to the whole family. He had us captivated. And Ricky will tell you, he had a, a little pulpit that he would beat and imitate his father. And yeah, so I'm, he, right. he, uh, he does one equally as good as the other. Um, you know, my, my wife is a very devout Christian and knows the Bible. Like, I, I, Ricky sometimes is astounded how much she knows. But when he starts speaking, 
she's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I didn't even, you know, that part I didn't read or that part, that part I didn't decipher. And then Ricky has a whole idea of that, uh, you know, that uh, section. And so anyway. Well, the night, the night that it happened, the big, the big, I call it the big night. It's not that I wondered. I said, you know what? I stepped in there and man, these chills came up and down my body. These chills just came by my body. And for the first time, I got to feel the Holy Spirit flow through my body, mm -hmm. my veins. And I knew, I knew it was my night. And he, and he's not, and I can tell you when he told me that the first time, the way he described it was he went through a lot of um, a lot of steps in that last scene in the movie. And he was still Ricky going through those steps as a person. And then when he came down to the wire, when he was facing like the biggest challenge of the night, like something that he could not overcome, they, they I can't tell you what happens, but they pitted him against something that was almost impossible to overcome. And Ricky said um, something happened right before that that you saw in the movie that's like devastating to him. He said he was like a freight train hit him. I don't want to say what it was, but he said he stood up and he didn't think he could go on. And so this is what he told me. And I'm just repeating the feeling I got. He said this Holy Spirit came inside of him and he stood up and he didn't even know where he was and that even who he was at that moment. And the thing overtook him. And he said, that's the only way I could do that last thing in the movie that I did was because I was not myself. It was in me, like overtaking that moment in a really amazing way. And he goes, that's when I really knew, like, you know, always knew that God is like controlling everything. Plus I drew the, I drew the cross in the dirt every time. That's I right. Died. That's right. I, I love that. Cross in the dirt. And I always stood on the cross every time I got to bed. That's right. I love that. Yeah, and the very last time, no one, no one has ever even done this in baseball ever. No one's ever drawn a cross. And that's stood. his signature. That's my that signature. Needs to be adopted. I'm going to tell my eight-year-old son that that's going to be the new his. No, new no, it's Ricky's. <laughs> we, could, we, we, could, we could start it. Just you know, start it. Period. But I drew a it cross would be neat. every time I stood on it. From the time I was 12 years old, 10 years old, I, I drew the cross and. Or, you know, you'd have you'd have people do this, you know, but, but I'm not Catholic. I'm I was a Baptist, and uh, we had Baptist rules. <laughs> so, so anyway, saying that, um, yeah, I drew a cross every time, and uh, I always had I always had the faith with me the whole 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 time of my lifetime. That's why well, I thought I, that's why I thought I was so good. That's why. It's your time, Ricky. Determination and sacrifices have come down to this.